The water of the Bodensee and the small town of Friedrichshafen lie in the distance on the horizon. The Zeppelin is Germany's national showpiece, says Captain Lehmann. The money to build it was raised by the German people. The airship is a symbol of national unity. This is their airship, he says. Their Zeppelin has come home. People of Friedrichshafen are ecstatic, full of pride. Their little town has become important, thanks to the Zeppelin. This great German achievement has restored their national pride. The Germans are not as happy as they look, says Lehmann. The original plan was to fly from Friedrichshafen to Friedrichshafen. Germany has no more money to spend, so Hurst pays. He owns the journey and flies from New York to New York. The warm sun of August shines gently. It's lovely to be in the park and to enjoy all the festivities. Lehman and I join some crew members in the company of German girls. Carl is with them. The afternoon is bright and joyful. We enjoy the moment completely with childlike abandon. I can't take my eyes off Carl. I force myself to look away. I sleep badly at night, too warm and stifled, and dream that there are lots of snakes, all chasing me, trying to bite me. One big one comes after me, wants me to kiss it. 
it is almost piteously aware of its repellent appearance and kind of shy. And it knows I hate it. And I'm frightened. I beg and beg. And it says that if I would only kiss it, it would acquire a soul. I'm in a dreadful fix. For I see its fangs and fear it to be poisoned. But I do let it touch my lips. I wake up early, sweaty, sicky, and not well. The morning of our departure, there is a complete fuss about Commander Eckner. In a talk he gave, he said that the Graf Zeppelin is actually out of date, but that Germany is working on a technically more advanced airship. Some of the passengers are highly agitated. No wonder the most dangerous stage lies ahead of us. We're not referring to Berlin or the plains of Poland, but to the vast, desolate expanse of Russia and Siberia. We have fuel for 150 hours to get us across 11,000 kilometers. One of the passengers gives a radio interview full of self-importance. I must be very careful in view of the pledge of silence expected from me. I want to consult some fellow lawyers before I say anything. Eckner addresses us. He is honest and direct. He has spoken to Stalin's staff. Russia has opened her gates so that we may fly over her vastness. This is an expedition. Ekna will give his life for our safety. for Berlin. Everybody is happy to be on the move again and eager to see Berlin. I find it hard to concentrate. 
political disagreements have melted away. Everyone is singing, laughing, and dancing, looking like a bunch of idiots. In the last hour, the city has become thronged with people. The traffic is chaotic. Businesses have shut down for the day. People are standing on every flat roof. Not everybody is celebrating the arrival of the Zeppelin. Hundreds have assembled in the streets to protest against the reparations. Just past the Polish frontier, 15th of August. <laughs> 